Last November, we celebrated the memorial of Kristallnacht, the Crystal Night. We commemorated the death of six million human beings, as we properly should have. The Kristallnacht, which transpired in Germany, when Adolf Hitler turned loose his jackbooted thugs, began one of the worst atrocities known to man. Martin Niemöller wrote about the very times when people failed to speak up for what they believed was right. Niemöller wrote that in Germany, the Nazis came for the communists, but I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews, but I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the Catholics, but I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. And then they came for me, but by that time, there was no one to speak up for anyone. Martin Niemöller died in Dachau. Dear friends, there are people dying, but you know, they are still radical ideas today in a world where 60% of the population of this globe live under one form of totalitarian rule or another, and most of it is communism. Many of our great intellectual and media and political elites have somehow found that that godless and alien philosophy called communism is no longer anathema. It is no longer something that we ought to question. And there has been an extraordinary embrace of a man by the name of Mikhail Gorbachev. Liberty was never meant to be a free ticket. Liberty means the opportunity. The opportunity to succeed or to fail in freedom. Liberty for ourselves and for our children means that government has a responsibility to promote the general welfare not to provide welfare to the general public. Right up the long length of Constitution Avenue, there's a U.S. District Court where I've been spending a lot of my time lately. And that has indeed tied up a lot of our time. And Director Casey and I had a lengthy discussion about the fact that this whole thing was coming unraveled and that things ought to be, quote, cleaned up. And I started cleaning things and up. And when you cleaned them up, did you or did you not shred documents that reflected the president's approval of the diversion? Objection. How many times do we have to have the question asked, Mr. Chairman? The witness has done it, uh, asked, answered that question, I think, about 10 times this morning, and I request respectfully that we move I'm, on to a new subject. I must overrule this because I have some difficulty in trying to get a clear answer myself, and I'm certain counsel is having that difficulty. Please proceed. Well, what is your question, counsel? <laughs> have you forgotten the question? Well, I have, and I have to make objections. So you, you ask it again, you, and I'll... You, you did, and it was overruled, and the question stands. I'd like the witness to answer it if he remembers it. Could we... He obviously doesn't remember it. He just asked you to repeat it. May you we did. have... You did. He did not. Sir, do you remember the question? My memory has been shredded. If, if you would be so kind as to repeat the question. You've testified that you shredded documents shortly after you heard from Director Casey that Furmark had said monies had been used from the Iranian arms sales for the benefit of the Contras. That is correct. And my question to you is, did you or did you not shred documents that reflected presidential approval of the diversion? I have absolutely no recollection of destroying any document which gave me an indication that the president had seen the document or that the president had specifically approved. I assumed that the three transactions which I supervised or managed or coordinated, whatever word you're comfortable with, and I can accept all three, were approved by the president. I never recall seeing a single document which gave me a clear indication that the president had specifically approved that action. 
I want to make sure we understand each other, sir. I'm talking about a document such as the type you've testified about with a check mark where it's, it says approve. I do not recall seeing a document with a check mark approved. One thing still upsetting me, however, is that no one kept proper records of meetings or decisions. This led to my failure to recollect whether I approved an armed shipment before or after the fact. I did approve it. I just can't say specifically when. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman. I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area, so may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Mr. Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in, in which he had worked. I believe yeah, that it was. Yeah, I but most, I to get yeah, I most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, uncertain arrangements can be made for an executive session. 